What's up Freedom Family, Dan here. Hope you guys are all doing super well today. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about one of the questions that I get the most from my students, from my subscribers. I've been getting this question at least once every single day and it's to do um, with comparing Amazon FBA and Shopify dropshipping, the pros and cons of each, what I think is better, whether you should be doing both at the same time. Um, you know, a lot of people or a lot of you have been starting with Amazon FBA and you know, while you guys are waiting for that product to come in, you guys are wondering whether you should get into something like uh, Shopify dropshipping. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about that. My personal opinion on doing both at the same time or maybe doing one or the other. So I've got all the pros and cons written down here so I apologize if I'm looking down at my uh, notes right here. We're gonna start off with explaining my background. So um, if you guys are new to the channel, my whole channel is about passive income, the freedom movement. Uh, it's about you know living the freedom lifestyle and basically um, it's focused on Amazon FBA. And obviously, you know the two uh, largest income streams in e-commerce are Shopify dropshipping and Amazon FBA. As you guys know, you guys have probably been watching some videos online if you guys ended up uh, you know watching this video here. So let's start off with Shopify. What is Shopify dropshipping, all right? Um, let's start off with what is dropshipping. You know, some of you might not even know what dropshipping is. So basically, dropshipping is you don't hold any inventory. Let's say you know you're the person that's going to be running this dropshipping store. You don't hold any inventory. Um, you find a supplier in China. There's a couple tools that you can use, like Oberlo and things like that. Um, so you basically find a Chinese supplier on AliExpress, which is a site that you can go on, and there's a bunch of you know products on there that you can buy in individual units. Uh, meanwhile, if you're familiar, Alibaba.com is, is the same site, but you're gonna have to order in bulk. So Alibaba is when you're gonna order in bulk and actually use that for Amazon, and then AliExpress is the one you use for Shopify dropshipping because um, the basic premise of dropshipping is that, let's say you, know, you create this website, you create the store, okay? So that's your Shopify store. And then when somebody goes on your store and they actually buy your product, you don't have to have the inventory, like you don't have to already have that product in stock. What happens is when you get an order, let's say for you know this pen, someone decides to buy this pen from your store, you've never seen this pen before. So what you're gonna do is, you know, you get the money from the person and then you go on to, um, you find the Chinese supplier on AliExpress that sells this exact pen and then you basically give them the shipping address of the person that bought this pen from your store. That way it completely bypasses you and it goes from the Chinese supplier straight to your customer. So, you know, that's the best part about dropshipping is that you don't have to hold any inventory and that's essentially what uh, dropshipping is. So basically, you know, anybody can start any kind of store um, anywhere, you know, all you need is a computer and an internet connection um, and, you know, from your laptop, literally could be on the beach. I mean, there's like a ton of people around the world making millions and millions of dollars from their dropshipping stores. Um, you know, usually I would say the biggest dropshipping stores um, are things like, you know, swimsuit brands, uh, things like clothing brands, you know, the ones that really have a strong social media following. Those ones are the ones that, um, you know, I'm talking about the ones with like the huge Instagram accounts with like, you know, maybe like the, the bikini stores and stuff like that with like the models and all that stuff. So those stores are typically the ones that make the absolute most money um, using dropshipping, but it's still good in certain cases, you know, if you wanna just start out and if you wanna really go out there and build a brand. So what Shopify is, uh, Shopify is not an actual business. So Shopify, all it is is the software, it's the tool that you install onto your website. So let's say you decide to open a store for, you know, for pens, right? I don't know, it's just the first thing that came to my mind. So you decide to open a store for pens. So you're gonna call it, you know, my name's Dan, so Dan's Luxury Pens, for example, right? So dansluxurypens.com, you buy that website, um, and then basically you take Shopify, you install Shopify on it, um, this requires you to pay the Shopify monthly fee. So it's about, I think it's like 79 a month. Um, it's pretty low, but there is a monthly fee. All right, and I believe that the first month there's like a free, uh, there's like a free trial. So I'm gonna put the link for Shopify in the description below. So you install Shopify onto it and then using Shopify, you can actually go and then, you know, just build out a store. It's very easy. It's like drag and drop. You use a Chrome extension called Oberlo, which um, allows you to go and find those Chinese suppliers on AliExpress. So basically you just copy paste it from AliExpress onto Shopify, onto your Shopify store. And um, yeah, so that's all it is. So essentially that's, um, you know, those are all your startup costs. You don't need to buy your inventory or anything like that. The only other startup cost is actually running the paid traffic to get the customers. You start off with zero customers. So let's get into the pros and cons of Shopify now that you know what Shopify is. So with Shopify, the pro, obviously you hold no inventory and um, you know, it's essentially low startup costs. Like I said, it's only the monthly Shopify fee plus what you have to spend on ads to get the customers. We're gonna talk about that in a second because it's very important. Number two, and this is a big pro with Shopify that a lot of people overlook. A lot of people with not a lot of business experience, they don't understand you know, controlling traffic and things like that. So with Shopify, you actually own your traffic, you own your customers. What that means is that as soon as, um, you know, let's say you wanna get the customer's emails. As soon as you have the customer's email, that's an asset right there. You know, an email list with 10,000 emails, you can actually sell that email list. You know, it's like an asset uh, on your balance sheet for your business. Right, and I know that sounds complicated, but just you know, hear me out right here. Let's say on your Shopify store, you know, someone goes on there, and then basically, 
you offer them a 50% off coupon if they give their email. So, you know, they go, they buy your thing, they leave their email. So now you got 10,000 emails. You know, now you got a list of 10,000 people that want to buy your stuff, you know, and as long as you keep promoting your store, you keep providing them content and emails and things like that, you know, keep providing value, um, then, you know, they'll keep buying and they'll keep buying as long as, you know, you're not uh, spamming them or anything like that. So that in itself means that you control your traffic. So if you have an email list of 100,000 emails, you know, you can literally close down that store, start another store, you know, that's in a similar um, niche, and then just use those same emails, you know, and you can also use those same emails to promote like affiliate offers and, th and things like that. You can also actually make money from promoting other stores and other people's offers and other, you know, things that um, your uh, customers might be interested in. So that essentially um, is what controlling your traffic means. And on Amazon, you actually don't control your traffic. You don't own your traffic. Amazon owns your traffic. So we're going to talk about that here um, as soon as I get to the Amazon part. Very, very important with Shopify, you know, your website, as long as it's up, you've got a store running. As long as you have customers, you're golden. You can't get banned. You know, you can't get, um, you know, nobody can just remove your store or anything like that. So that's the beauty. So that's the best part about controlling and owning your traffic. So another pro with Shopify is that you can actually use that email list, like I said, to go out and build out funnels and a lot of other internet marketing stuff, email campaigns. Um, you know, special offers, Facebook ads, um, you know, social media, branding, things like that. Um, a couple things you do on Amazon too. So essentially with Shopify, a lot more internet marketing goes in there and there's a lot more ways to actually promote to your customers, get them to, you know, keep buying and get them to, you know, upsell them on things. So those are the pros with Shopify. I would say the two biggest pros are that it's low startup costs, you don't hold that in your inventory and you own your traffic. So you can actually, you know, um, have an asset, you have that email list and you can basically keep promoting them and you keep them coming back to your store. So now the cons of Shopify, and there are a lot of cons with Shopify. The number one common Shopify, especially if you're a beginner and you probably are a beginner if you're watching this um, video, you actually have to go and find your traffic. So as soon as you build out your store, you know, it might look super pretty, it might look super nice, but um, you know, nobody's actually on your store. Nobody knows about your store. You actually have to go out there and then promote your store. And how do you get customers with, to your store? The only way um, is paid traffic. So that's the best way. That's the only way, especially when you're starting out. So, you know, typically you would run Facebook ads. Maybe you could run some social media influencer campaigns, things like that. All the stuff you have to pay for and, you know, paid traffic. So that's Facebook ads, uh, Google AdWords, YouTube ads is a big part of Shopify because that is how you're going to get your customers. If you don't run those, there's no way you're going to get people to your Shopify store. And of course, with paid traffic, you actually have to learn paid traffic. So this is the skill that you actually have to learn if you want to learn, if you actually get any customers to go and buy your stuff on your Shopify store, right? So, you know, Shopify is good and all because you don't have to, you don't have any inventory or anything like that. You control your traffic, but you know, a huge con where most people will fail, um, you know, is the paid traffic part because when you're starting a Shopify store, you're essentially committing yourself that you're going to learn paid traffic. So typically you'd spend uh, time and money uh, learning and optimizing, um, you know, Facebook ad campaigns, things like that. Um, you know, you have to find that winning campaign. You have to keep testing things, keep figuring things out and just, you know, making sure that um, whatever you're doing is actually getting, giving you a return on your income. So you're all, you know, you're putting money in first without knowing, um, you know, how much money is going to come out. And I'm talking about the ad campaigns and, you know, with something that you don't know, like Facebook ads, you know, most beginners don't know Facebook ads like me. When I was first starting out, I had no idea about Facebook ads, YouTube ads, anything like that. And so for me to, you know, when I was a beginner in your stage, um, you know, I chose Amazon for that reason, because I didn't want to learn Facebook ads. I didn't want to learn YouTube ads and all that stuff. Right. I'm not saying it's impossible. Of course it's possible. And it's a great skill to learn, but you're going to need some money to test those ad campaigns. You're going to need to put some money in and you're also going to need to put some time in and you know, it might be a headache for a little bit until you find that winning ad campaign. As always, persistence and entrepreneurship is very important. And you know, whichever income stream you choose, you know, whether it's Shopify or Amazon, you will succeed as long as you persist. Right? And with Shopify, you're gonna have an amazing skill now, you're gonna learn paid traffic, which can be applied to anything else in making money online, in the making money online industry. All right, so now let's talk about Amazon FBA. And let's start off with what is Amazon FBA? So Amazon FBA, which stands for Fulfillment by Amazon, um, is relatively new, it's only been around for a couple of years, and basically Amazon allows anybody, you know, from a list of certain countries, uh, for example, the United States, Canada, you know, anywhere in Europe, and uh, you know, those places, to actually go and send in their product, so you can actually go and send in your product to the Amazon warehouse, and they'll do all the packaging, they'll do all the shipping, they'll, you know, pack it up, send it out to the customer, you don't have to do anything, and it's completely passive, and in exchange, you actually give Amazon um, a fee, so you give them, you know, a decent fee, and you know, obviously you're still making a profit considering that fee. So anybody in the world can actually use Amazon FBA to uh, sell their product and then Amazon is gonna do everything, ship out the product, handle the customer service, handle the returns, and everything like that. And you just pay them an FBA fee. So let's start off with the pros of Amazon FBA. 
So with Amazon, uh, remember we talked about Shopify, you start off with zero customers, nobody knows about your store and you actually have to go out and basically buy customers, you have to go out and um, you know, launch Facebook ads and things like that to get those customers. With Amazon FBA, um, you know, there are already 310 million uh, customers on Amazon FBA, these are active customers. And then out of those 310 million, there are uh, 50 million prime members. And this is based off of uh, the numbers from January 2018. So obviously there are hundreds of millions of people searching for you know millions of products on Amazon for every single kind of niche, every single kind of target market, there are customers for it. So I would say that's the number one biggest pro with Amazon FBA. There are already a ton of customers searching for your product and if you follow the correct product research um, techniques and if you follow the correct formula, you know, and obviously the one that I teach on this channel here, and you know, I'm so happy that you're watching because after this video, you can go out and check out all the other great Amazon um, you know, and passive income content on the channel here. Um, so if you follow that, uh, you know, exactly what I teach, if you follow the correct product research uh, techniques, there is literally no way that you could fail. And so essentially, there's a lot less risk because with Amazon, you know there's gonna be customers for your product, you know there's gonna be demand as soon as you put it on there, and then you know after doing a couple things like running a product launch and running a coupon giveaway and things like that, um, your product is actually gonna be ranked on the first page for, you know, let's say, you know, I don't know, Luxury Pen, for example, we are talking about pens earlier, so Luxury Pen, your product is gonna be ranked on the first page, and as soon as it's on the first page, it's gonna be selling, and you're gonna be making money. And you didn't even have to spend a single dollar on uh, Facebook ads or YouTube ads, Google AdWords, or anything like that. Meanwhile, on Shopify, to even get your first customer, you're gonna have to sink in you know, maybe $50, $100, or $200 to find that winning ad campaign that's gonna actually attract customers to your store and get them coming back. So another pro, like I said, you don't have to pay for external ads, any kind of um, Facebook ads or anything like that. You don't have to pay for that for Amazon FBA. Um, Amazon does have a pay-per-click uh, system inside of it, which I recommend that you use because um, you know it will actually make you more money than if you don't use it, um, especially if you follow the correct PPC formula, which I show on my channel here. So I recommend you to use that, but it's a lot easier from my experience to learn um, I'm talking about Amazon PPC, then Facebook ads and Google AdWords and things like that because that's on a whole other level. And with Amazon FBA, another pro is that it's not a lot of work. After you've launched your product, after you, you know, you filled out the bullet points, the description, the title, after you've gotten amazing pictures for your Amazon product, um, you know, and you've actually launched it, it's on the first page, the only thing you have to do is wait until it's time to reorder and then, you know, as soon as you reorder, then that's it. And you're pretty much good for a month because you order a month in advance, um, you know, for how, however many units you predict um, you're gonna sell out for the next 30 days. And another pro with Amazon FBA is that a product will typically sell for a long time. So the life cycle of a product actually lasts a long time. And as long as you stay in stock, as long as you stay on the first page, um, which you will, you know, if your product keeps selling because that's what determines uh, whether you're still on the first page or not. And as long as you're in stock, you're gonna keep selling, you're gonna keep making money. And it's more, I would say, of a stable income stream than Shopify for that reason, because Shopify, you have to keep finding those winning ad campaigns. You have to keep, um, you know, making sure that you're throwing special offers at your customers to so keep them coming back. Because with Shopify, it's such an easy barrier to entry, such a low barrier to entry that anybody can just start their Shopify store. I can literally go on my computer right now and just you know, start a t-shirt store or something like that. And I'm gonna have to spend time testing out different niches, testing out different products, testing out different uh, ad campaigns, which is all possible, like I said, but you know, requires persistence and time. And that's why I like Amazon better. So Amazon seems like it's got a lot of pros, but let's talk about the cons of Amazon. And there are cons with Amazon. So the number one biggest con obviously is the higher startup costs. So with Amazon FBA, um, you're gonna have to spend about a thousand, a little bit, a little more than a thousand dollars for your initial um, startup uh, inventory for your first order. Because you actually have to contact the Chinese supplier on Alibaba.com. That's a site that I mentioned, um, which you actually buy products in bulk. And then you know you put your brand on it, you put your logo on it, and then basically um, you know you're gonna have to buy maybe 250 units at the beginning or 500 units at the beginning as a test order. And then if it sells well, what well, since it's Amazon, you can just reorder a thousand units, and then you're sure that it's gonna keep selling well. But you need to you know put up that money upfront for startup capital. And so typically a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, maybe two thousand dollars if it's um, you know something more expensive to source like an electronic item or something like that. So um, that's something to be aware of. So the higher startup cost is definitely a con. And number two biggest con is you do not own your traffic. So with Amazon, Amazon owns your customers. There is no way that you can get your customers emails. You can't really um, run any special kind of promotions to your customers, um, you know, unless it's in a follow-up sequence, a follow-up email sequence after your customers already bought it. So you can do a lot less with your customers with Amazon. With Essentially with Amazon, you're learning how to use the Amazon algorithm and how to, you know, uh, make it work to your advantage to rank your product on the first page. And that's basically all you can do. That's all you need to know. 
you know, to make money. Another con with Amazon FBA is that it is harder to build a brand on Amazon because um, you know, you're constantly looking for good products and then those good products might not always be under the same uh, niche or target market. So let's say you know, your first product, you found some kind of a baby product and then you know, um, you're doing your product research, then you found some kind of like a, a tool or some kind of hardware product, right? Um, you know, it's really hard to build a brand you know, when these two products are completely unrelated, you know, baby and tools and hardware. So um, it's still possible. And I would recommend when you're building a brand on Amazon, um, you know, let's say your first box is baby and it sells well, then just expand, you know, linearly in that, um, you know, just do complimentary items and you will still sell well because you'll actually establish a brand reputation and a brand image. So it's still possible. It's just a little bit harder to build a brand on Amazon FBA because, you know, not all products are good and you really have to use uh, correct product research techniques to find those good products. And then with Amazon FBA, the last con I would say is that you have to be careful not to invest in any kind of restricted products. So don't invest in anything like tobacco or drug related or anything like, um, you know, any kind of weapons or any kind of chemicals or anything like that. So obviously with Shopify, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing that either. But you know, there's not like a, there's not like a, an agency, a regulatory agency that's going to tell you to take off those products with Shopify. It's your own website. You can do whatever you want, right? But um, that is another con with Amazon. You have to be careful what you're listing on there. But as long as you're searching up those restricted products, um, you know, there's a restricted products list on Amazon, then you're good to go. So which one do I like better? So the one that's worked best for me, the one that actually changed my life was definitely Amazon FBA. And because it worked so well for me, I committed to, um, you know, scaling it and learning it and really uh, mastering it. That's what I've done. And that's what I've been doing for the past year. So um, with Shopify, I've experimented. I've tried uh, a couple of different stores, but, um, you know, I've really focused on Amazon FBA because it's the one that I like more. But based on this video, you know, I'm not saying that, um, you know, Shopify is worse than Amazon. I'm just saying that you have to be, you have to be doing different things. You know, if you're good maybe at, um, you know, more of the branding aspect of things and really making your product stand out, then Amazon for sure. If you're more, um, if you're better at like Facebook ads and internet marketing, things like that, and you're not afraid of really testing out, testing things out, testing out different niches, and maybe you don't have as much money, you know, uh, as Amazon, then I would definitely recommend Shopify. But, you know, this comes down to one very important thing. Commit to one. Don't try to do both. You know, a lot of people, maybe they've committed to Amazon. They've even taken my Amazon Freedom course. Um, you know, they're my students. And then while they're waiting for their product, they're they're thinking of doing Shopify as like a, a way to make some side income while they're waiting for Amazon. And you know, that's just like dabbling and that's just drifting between two income streams. And obviously, you know, when you know, when you chase two rabbits, you catch none. It's like the famous quote by Confucius. So um, I stand by that quote. I think that it's super powerful. And then, you know, all the results in my life were when I committed to one thing. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys liked it, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, tell me what you think. Uh, follow me on social media, Instagram, Snapchat, links are below. I'm gonna be doing some epic traveling soon, uh, some epic vlogs coming out, and some amazing content on uh, e-commerce, how to make money online, and passive income coming up soon, and general entrepreneurship, all right? So subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.